you've installed a VFD spindle on your hobby CNC and you want to control it via Gerbil, you've come to the right place. Come with me as we go along to go through the steps to configure your VFD for automated control. In this tutorial, we're going to go through the process of configuring your VFD controller to be controlled by your Gerbil-based CNC control board. This method can be used with both SaneSmart and Fox Alien based control boxes, although the configuration may be slightly different with Fox Alien based CNC's. This tutorial is specific to the H100-1.5C2-1B model of VFD controller operating at 110 volts. Uh, please keep in mind your VFD controller may be different and some settings may not have the available functionality. Uh, I will be configuring the VFD to work with the SaintSmart Prover XL4030 version 1 control box. This tutorial assumes you already have a VFD spindle configured correctly and usable by manual control to your CNC. Now before we begin, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications to make sure you always get my newest content. Let's get started. The control box for the SaneSmart Prover XL4030 V1 has an external connector to connect to the laser control connection on the board. We'll use this connection for its PWM signal. It outputs on my machine at approximately 3.3 volts. The wiring from left to right, looking at the back of the connector, is a 12 volt constant power which I'm using a red cable on, a ground cable which is black and a PWM signal cable which is yellow. The connectors didn't come pre-wired so I used colored cables to differentiate between. A word of caution here, use a multimeter to test the voltages on your outgoing connections. It's important that you don't get the wires crossed as you're working with live power and you can damage the boards. Uh, that being said, I'm not responsible for any kind of damage that's done to your machine. Do this at your own risk. While a PML PWM voltage converter is not completely necessary, I've installed one in hopes of providing cleaner power to the VFD. The module is divided into an input side on the left and an output side on the right. I've wired the ground cable between sides as they share a common ground. On the left side, we have the cable cabling coming from the laser port on the control box. The ground is connected to the first port on the left the yellow PWM cable is connected to the second port and the red 12 volt constant is connected to the third port from the left. Our fourth port from the left is our ground, fifth port is our outgoing ground cable, and our sixth port is our outgoing PWM signal cable. The ground connects to the port labeled G and D on the VFW or VFD. Our PWM cable connects to the port labeled AI1, which is the analog input 1. I've also jumpered X1 to ground, which forces forward motion on the spindle. Next, we're going to configure the VFD. There's three things we have to tell the VFD in order to make it function correctly. Where we want to control it from, what input source we're going to use to receive the external control signal, and the power rating of our PWM signal. This can be 0 to 5 volts or 0 to 10 volts depending on your PWM signal. The first setting we need to adjust is our control mode. Uh, in order to set our settings, we're going to press the set button and we're going to change to F001. You can use the double left arrow key to switch to the tens place. and then the double left arrow key again to switch to the 100s place. So the default mode is zero, which means keyboard control. We want to change this to, to uh, number one, which is gonna set us to an external terminal and allow our G-code sender to send G-code commands to the VFD. Our next setting, F002, is our frequency selection. The default on that is number three. And number three is telling it to use the potentiometer on the front of the VFD. 
we're going to change that to one, which will set us to analog input number one, which is going to take our PMW voltage. Next, we're going to set up the VFD to prohibit reverse spinning, so that our spindle will always spin in a clockwise direction. So that is actually F023. And we're going to set that to zero to prohibit reverse of the spindle. Next we will set 0040. That's our forward reverse key function. In the default mode of zero that gives forward and reverse control to the VFD keyboard. What we want to do is set it to control channel mandatory for keyboard. This gives us a backup means of bypassing gerbil control and taking manual control back of the spindle simply by hitting the FR key uh, for temporary manual control. Next is our F044. F044 is our X1 function key. Normally this is set to number two, which means forward. We're going to set it to number one for run. This is going to allow the spindle startup. Next will be F070. F070 is our input channel selection. By default, it's set to 0 to 10, but can also be set to 0 to 5 volts, depending on what your needs are. In the case of my particular board, the Saint Smart control board, a 10 volt is fine, so I'm not going to make any changes. F072 is our gain. That's for our analog input one channel gain. This is where you can make fine tune adjustments to either lower or uh, increase the tuning of the input signal. In my case, I have to run at about 107.5 to get full capacity at the top speed. The trade-off for that is that at lower speeds, it tends to go a little bit faster than what I might like. And here to F170, this is our uh, extension display. Normally it will show bus voltage. What we're going to set it to is the operation speed. Uh, what that's going to do is that's going to show you our RPMs. So that's going to be set to number two as opposed to number four. For 171, that's the extension of display number two. This is going to be our PMW percentage. So we're going to set that to number three for analog input one. F184 is our RPM display factor. It's set by default to 1.0. We're going to set it to 0 0.1. Zero point one will show us four digits on the display and drops the last digit. So what that means, if you're running at eight thousand RPM, it will show eight hundred. If you're running at twenty-four thousand RPM, it would show uh, twenty-four hundred. Uh, F one eighty-five is going to do our startup preset display selection. So this tells us uh, what to display. Normally it will show the frequency output in uh, one hertz increments. 
And what we want to do is change this to number four. Number four, it says use what's designated in 170. If we remember 170, we made that the operational speed. And that is the last parameter that we need to figure. We can hit escape to exit out. And then what we'll need to do is unplug and replug in the VFT to allow it to take all of the settings and switch control over to manual. This will be the only time you have to unplug it or reset it. All right, now that we've rebooted the VFD, I'm gonna send a G-code command. The command I'm sending is S12000M3, which is gonna tell our spindle to run at 12,000 RPM. And as we see, I've initiated and as we spin up we've spun up and according to the VFD we're running at about 1300 or 13,170 RPM. This is because I set the gain to 107.5 percent. So again it's going to spin a little bit fast for this range and as you can see from the laser test over on the right hand side we're getting RPMs similar to what was noted on the VFD. Now if we increase this to 24,000 we'll see that the VFD again spins up and we're at 23,970 approximately. So we're about 30 RPMs under the fully rated capacity. Not too bad. We'll send an M5 command to turn the spindle off and let it spin down. For the F072AI gain control, it's up to you if you want to use it or not. If you do use it, you can adjust the spindle speeds, the downside being that they may be above your stated speeds. If you choose not to use it, your spindle may not be fully up to the required RPMs. It's best for you to decide which route you want to go. I want to give credit to James Dean Designs for paving the path for controlling the spindle via Gerbil. His video linked in the description was immeasurably helpful in getting this set up. Thank you all for watching the video and please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. I try to answer all comments in a timely fashion. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you again soon.